I grew up in sunny Buffalo, New York, where the gardening season is short, and I really, I didn't have a lot of experience. I, you know, grew up in apartments. When I came to Kozan, I didn't know anything. I'd never harvested anything in my life. You know, the very first step to teach a class I really think has to start with uh, planning, like you would do with anything. If you're gonna start hydroponics, first, start with your grade. The lessons are on our, our shared Google Drive, and so at our school, it's very easy when I log into my shared drive. Then I would go to Grand Our Planet's lesson plan, and the lesson is right there with the materials. So Grand Our Planet has our curriculum by grade. Find something that interests you, that you'll find the more you're interested in it, the more power you'll teach it. If you love it and believe it, the kids will too. So just pick one lesson. Just try one hydroponics lesson and be amazed. See what the kids say. Then it, it lays out your, your initial sponge activity, your hook. How are you getting the kids involved? What is your uh, lesson objective? What standard? What do you want the kids to, to learn? And I think for, for me, what Grand Air Planet was able to give me with their curriculum is it doesn't just give me science standards. It gives me, here's your, here's your reading or writing standard. Here it is right here, there's the standard. And often I've seen other programs where Here's this cool thing, now go find a standard that connects to it. No, Green Air Planet actually takes your math standards and gives you math lessons and gives you activities that connect directly to what grade it has. Find something that interests you, that you'll find the more you're interested in it, the more power you'll teach it. If you love it and believe it, the kids will too. So start with just one thing to connect with. So the next step would be to create an outline that would have um, my standards, it would have my student objectives, it would have my materials that I need, it would have my assessment component, did the students understand what I'm trying to teach them? So that's pretty much what my outline would have, a basic five steps, what do I need to make this lesson successful so then I can move forward. There's some books possibly that you need with the lessons. So for myself, I reach out to my school librarian and said, hey, do we have any of these books? Yes, we have them all. Or I can reach out to my principal. Or Green Art Planets, we've got extra copies of whatever you need. So I think when it comes to materials, what you need in each lesson is scripted. It's, it's right there for you. So there's no, what am I gonna do? And so many of the lessons are already ready. There's nothing you need to go to Walmart and buy 25 things to try to make the lesson, which with some of these science curriculums, that's the problem. There's lessons of what to plant. What do you want to do with what you plant? So for hydroponics, that gives me this opportunity to try, you know, different types of lettuce, different types of herbs. And then for our school, um, we either harvest the lettuce and we, we may have like an end of the year celebration where the kids get to try four kinds of lettuce in, in one salad. Or let's try putting some, some basil that I took that seed of basil, I put it in rock wool. I transplanted it into a unit. I watched it grow and now I'm eating it. That full circle connection to that plant um, is something that hydroponics offers that outdoors is not as easy. It's not as uh, scientific and, and, and systematic. After I get my outline, after I get my materials, the next step is for me is uh, I, I plan out the lesson in my head. Well, right now we need to start planting. So let's talk about how do we plant seeds? What do seeds need to grow? Then I would go to Grand Our Planet's lesson plan, and the lesson is right there with the materials. It tells you what to do, and now I'm doing it. I would feel like I would have all the tools to be successful. My other uh, bit of advice for someone who's maybe very nervous would be, look at the Virtual Academy. The lessons are already there. You don't have to go on YouTube and hope to find what you're looking for. Here's Farmer Joe explaining how to, to do this explicitly. It's, it's there for you. Someone's teaching the lesson. I can watch Farmer Joe teach me. In the year I can play that for the kids and he can teach, or I can replicate what he teaches. That's that amazing thing as a teacher, watching someone teach it gave me the confidence to say, wrong, I'm gonna make it work. Wow, look at all of this. Do you know where we are right now? It's a totally man-made habitat. This is a giant hydroponics garden. All of these plants are growing in plastic pipes that have nutrient solution in them instead of the plants growing in soil like in our outdoor garden. Just look at all these vegetables. It's a hydroponic farm. So in a hydroponic farm habitat, we can control all the elements that plants need. We control the temperature, we control the amount of light, we control the amount of water, and we control the amount of nutrients. We've created a habitat 
that is the perfect place for our vegetables to grow. And so I, I felt like I can do this. I can, I can replicate this. So it was, Virtual Academy is amazing. Where's the soil? There's none, because there's water on it. Because the water. So when I take out my plant, here's my plant. We started with our seed and our rock wool. We planted our seed and we let it grow. And then this came out, what are these things? Roots. roots. And then look, the plant is sprouting up. There's a lot of supports that are within Green Our Planet. We have a, a once a month meeting, sitting down with someone with objectives, with ideas, with resources, with uh, either um, when a class is being offered or something that there's an opportunity. So when I teach the class, I usually, again, start with what are we learning? Why are we learning this? Can you say hydroponics? Hydroponics. And it's growing without soil. Do we see our plants growing? Yes. Where does, there's no sun. How is this plant growing? Because of these. And then I let them uh, discuss. And then from there, it's mostly hands-on. I really believe that 90% of what we do with this, these opportunities need to be hands-on. They'll have their science journal where again, they're maybe drawing a picture, maybe writing a sentence, maybe doing something to connect to something. I don't have behavior issues. I don't have um, anything but smiles and happiness. What surprised me was how fast it grew the first time they were just little seeds. And then like two, yes. week, two or three weeks later, they were like huge. And at the end, we come back and an assessment piece for me might be a simple thumbs up and thumbs down. It could be a Google form. It could be a simple uh, write in your journal, like give me a sentence of something you saw, something you learned, uh, maybe restating the objective of what we were trying to accomplish today. And each age is different. That's the joy of it. Like from kinder to fifth, there's a lot of different opportunities to do a lot of different things. There's lots of classes that Greener Planet offers. Take one class, give up one afternoon, they give you a great meal and you learn something really cool, that's one option. My objective is to empower you to use hydroponics as a teaching tool. You can either take a class and learn or experience it firsthand. The curriculum is there for you, the people are there for you, hands-on, there's videos, there's tutorials. All the tools you need to be successful are there. Because we don't usually get to touch the roots in the soil, right? No. Not normally, so this is kind of interesting that we get to see the plant growing, seeing the parts of the plants. The best thing about learning hydroponics is to eat the food that you make. 